what if who we truly are and contentment, peace, love, appreciation, joy, happiness, what if all of that can only be found by recognizing and loving who you are and who you are can only ever be found and exist right here right now in every present moment it's there within you but I think I think that A root cause of all of our dysfunctional behaviours and broken relationships stems fundamentally on all of these nuances that we create all along the journey as we move further away from the present moment, from who we really are, without all the layers that we pile on top. I love the simplicity of this notion that whatever you aspire to be and feel like should hopefully be in line with most other people and that is to just know themselves and be themselves and just be happy. That's, you know, that's something I think we all secretly strive for. Or outwardly, openly strive for. I think we've come from a generations old, species old, who knows how old, set of practices that mean that we're just setting our sights outward with everything. We have developed these egos which creates a sense of self. We have become separate from what is and what is is everything everything just is in every moment you've got is and you've got now symbolizing presence and you've probably got other elements that I can't um, remember um and I think really At the basis, I've got a strong feeling that it all goes down to the same fundamental roots. And that might stem from a simple acknowledgement that could this narrative be the case? That it all stems from our relationship being further and further away from the now and from what is. I think... If you find your is, that is to say, who you are in the moment, which can change drastically. It's not a, it's not a line that's just on a constant flat plane and then we fluctuate like a frequency up and below that line. It's, it, it could be seen as that. But I think more realistically, life is just always up and down and we're along for the ride. And at any given moment, that present moment is who we are, is what is. That environment that we find ourselves in, is it, it, it just has a mind of its own. You can't control that. It's a combination of lots of things i.e. people in our day-to-day lives, that construct, have constructed, have built this whole environment around us, this whole experience. So that external world, the vastness of it, you have no control over. You have control somewhat over your inner experience. I just think that's far... (laughs) <laughs> far advanced in our capabilities in our present capabilities 
I think, a, a key to unlocking a lot of Earth's mysteries, our own mysteries, is, is going to be derived from really having a paradigm shift when it comes to our perceptions and in particular our relationship to what is because we are a part of what is and when you start piling all of these layers of the ego these layers of separation quite literally um the more we identify as an individual and the more we identify with the useful tools as concepts of imagination into the future and memory of the past and all of that coming together to build, uh, I guess, more of a focus on building a future that you want or um, taking the lessons of the past and and trying to uh trying to use them or let them go both sides the past and the future they don't exist anymore or they never have or they never will by chance we have to strive to manifest them or let them go we put so much effort into that because we're always competitive. And that's, that's a good thing. Everything just is. It can be seen as a tool or it can be seen as a hindrance or any number of things. Um, let me pause for a sec. What it comes down to, again, is... I think everything ultimately stems from how we are moving away in our existence, in our perceptions, in our day-to-day mind-focused, energy-focused world. We're usually either focused on the future or the past, and neither are true. In any given moment, the now is the only thing that is and will ever be true. The present moment and what is the true nature of everything without a spectrum attached to it of good and bad of how we feel it, it's just objectively observed use your senses take it in that is whether it's a concept or an object or a person or a situation it just is and if you watch how you perceive the thing that is the experience, whether it's external and you have no control over it, or whether it's internal and you can at least observe yourself, the more you do that, the more you will realize that you enter a space where if you're able to watch yourself in third party, then who is that watcher? And so then you enter this present kind of awareness state. Uh, a different... A different perspective of awareness and so from there you know it's like a meditative state and you can observe a lot of what is in that state so yeah in order to develop myself which is a, a future focused thing or whether I regret not doing stuff, putting things off. I regret not being where I thought I should be. If my focus is on the past, then again, that's, that's wasted energy. If this concept is true then it really does allow for you to put all of your focus, if you can, in your spare time, out of your necessities. If you can focus it on the very moment, 
it doesn't matter if you place yourself in serenity and try to block out the world that helps you concentrate that helps your senses to disengage and your mind to calm and quieten and it allows you more tranquility that is a nice place to be an environment to be the truth of what is it could be anything some things work for you some things don't so it's not a requirement for you to treat it as a form of meditation because every moment is every moment is there it's been there it's going to be there And you just have to observe it without your ego running the narrative and making snide remarks and making thoughts and making plans. That mind chatter is your identity. It's your ego. Your mind chatter without ego is just going to be an internal machine, this biological, amazing machine. And you're going to start hearing and feeling (laughs) all of these little systems and teams and mechanisms. All of them are, are communicating and you will start to feel this biological machine running autonomously. It's just you, the the chief, the CEO of Ego Incorporated. You've been too caught up in the mental strains of, I mean, ego. If you're able to tap in to whatever means, but tap into that now, tap into that isness, and not think, and just allow, you see, here's the conundrum with thinking, and when people say, oh, don't think or it's okay to think thoughts are in this mystical realm where they could be they could be translations right thoughts could be a way that your whole body or your senses and your brilliance your intellect it can pick up on different signals right that we we haven't scientifically um characterized and and identified and named yet right but we know that we're receiving all these signals and maybe thoughts is just a way that our our tool our computer our mind is able to process them and then it turns out this this dialogue using language uh, and it comes in the, in, in the form of, of these thoughts. It's like telepathy. Telepathy of the conscious mind. So if it's telepathy of the conscious mind, given all the things about, all the notions and, and ideas about Uh, a higher level of consciousness about your higher self and if they can communicate to you through your thoughts then that is difficult to mix uh, that that that's difficult to separate from your own thoughts who you think is you who's what i claim to be mostly your ego ego's thoughts next to the stillness of, I don't know, your blank self, the observer, whoever that is, and 
your higher self if you attune to that frequency and you're then able to pick up different concepts and inspirations. Because if they are picked up as, as thoughts, then they're not really of your own. Not as ego, anyway. Not Anyway. Ay, ay, ay. It is a curious notion and a curious reminder that if this is true, that finding the answer to a lot of things, a lot of difficulties and a lot of intentions can only be found right here, right now, in the awareness of what is. And that's yourself included. Or maybe it's realizing that the more you disengage and disempower the future thoughts and the past thoughts and align yourself to just what is, you in the now, then that is where you can resonate with truth. And if you have enough patience and discipline and bravery and authenticity and all of these qualities, you have enough integrity to stay in that space and learn and observe and just be there, that is ultimately you being you. And I think in a way that's being in this attuned state of just being. I think a lot of things can come from that. And that's why I'm venturing into that space more and more and more. Maybe I don't need to have a shortcut to tune into that space. Maybe it can be uh, more properly achieved through meditation, through yoga, through learned and practiced disciplines. But right now, that seems like more to put on my plate and I, I feel like I'm struggling with a lot even though not much has manifested yet I'm inside dealing with a lot and I am choosing to create more space and I'm choosing to give myself more sleep and less stress and just uh, and just afford myself some laziness afford myself some peace and out of this forced enclosure uh, mainly of just my room I haven't left a house in days in this respite I'm realizing certain things and it's worth exploring it's just I'm getting really caught up in how to how to utilize this journey, maybe broadcast it, publish it, make money out of it so I can carry on. I'm kind of selfishly thinking about how I can monetize this. I think that's one of my difficulties as well. I always have a ick relationship with money and business and having to do all these processes that's just a pain in the ass just to get likes and attention and leverage these tools Ugh. it's so distasteful yet it seems so necessary to just play this game but I don't want to play the game I want to just I want to just be me and do what I want to do <laughs> Why is that so freaking hard? What I'll do is I'll start having conversations with friends who also read Eckhart Tolle and talk about the now. And maybe practice some things. 
some exercises to help to help trigger a little response inside flick to just tune into the now like a spontaneous meditation I'll explore that yeah I might be onto something the, a lot of the a lot of the people <laughs> in the past who I'm, I've, I'm pulling inspiration from have always said the same things it's, the simplicity is so beautiful yet so tricky I, I think it's true we have strayed so far away from what is and real truth and authenticity we've strayed so far that a lot of the difficulties we encounter we suffer and we experience stems from f just the fact that we've strayed so far from equilibrium from is from truthful authentic consciousness source we have strayed so far from source that we've entered so many difficulties and i think really if we were to tune in to the source however far up the stream we can fathom or connect to we should and we should stay in that space and learn <laughs>